All right, so we've talked about we've talked about three of the ways that people get wealthy. Let's talk about the fourth one, which is the second largest, right? Yep. Now, this one, again, this is a lot of the folks that we interact with, but still, when you look at it, it's not a majority. 17% of the folks with whom we interact say this is the way that they were able to build their wealth. They were able to turn themselves into what we're just calling a business executive. They were able to work their way up the corporate ladder. They started at a job and worked their way up until they were in a management role, in a leadership role, in an ownership role, in some sort of capacity. And with that, the benefits of serving in those roles came along with it, namely a really big shovel. Yeah, I mean, you, when you have a, such a big income, it gives you a lot of opportunity. Because you've heard, guys, I've talked about the three ingredients of success, which is that discipline. Mm -hmm. That discipline where you live on less than you make creates the margin that leads to money that gets invested. And then you, of course, have enough time that you're mm -hmm. successful to let it grow through compounding. Um, but here's the interesting thing. Uh, a business executive you know, is not too different than a virtuoso in the fact that they have big chunks of money yep. coming their way. So maybe you didn't have to be as disciplined to have this much income coming in. Um, but it is one of those things where you still need to be very self-aware to make sure that you make the most out of this opportunity. Yeah, far too often we see on the negative side, executives have this big incomes. It allows them to cover not having discipline, or it allows them to even in some circumstances discover not starting early, right? Not taking advantage of time and putting mm -hmm. it on their side. So if you're someone who does fall into this camp, or maybe it looks like this is going to be your trajectory, you're going to work your way up the corporate ladder, we want to give you some tips and tricks to think about in order to maximize this, to make sure that you do fall into that. And the first one is maximize those executive benefits. Well, leadership becomes unique things that may be available to you, like employee stock purchase plans, RSUs, stock options, other types of incentives. Those things are exciting, exciting for a reason, and they can have a huge impact in your financial life if you recognize the value of them and the value they can have inside of your financial plan. Yeah, you definitely need to be familiar with these benefits. You need to take advantage of these benefits. But I do want to caution you to make sure you understand the difference between human capital and then your investment mm -hmm. capital. Because um, knowing how all the incentives and everything work, you do want to take advantage because capital gains – um, as well as the employee stock purchase plans with those huge discounts. Yep. This is no different. A lot of you, this is no different than free money like a company mm -hmm. match from your employer. So take advantage of it. But also have a path or a plan or a system that will turn that into capital outside mm -hmm. of the company you work with. Because what you don't want to end up with, we've seen it so, you know, so much volatility going on right now. And I think people are realizing. If you're concentrated, meaning all your human capital, your wages, your talents are coming, are poured into this company, and you're an executive for them, but then you never created diversified capital and income outside of the company, if something ever happens to the company, you're kaput. Your wealth, your success was tied too much to it. Let's build some wealth and success outside of this. This is something... I mean, you've seen this firsthand, yeah. right? Like, you, you've actually lived with people who experienced this, right? Like you saw this at your previous firm where people failed to do this and it blew up on them completely. I, I, I thought it was very interesting because I'm, I'm now old enough. I, I asked people, hey, do you remember Lucent Technologies? Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, if you started the investment game in the last 10 years, you, you're like, who? And I, and I always, it cracks me up because Lucent was one of those top 10 companies that mm -hmm. everybody, it's not too far from like with the world comms and these other boom bust type stories, the Enrons yep. and other things. But I knew too many executives because it was an Atlanta based company that were so excited about what Lucent Technologies was creating that they never created that separation mm -hmm. from their human capital to their investment capital so that when it did go bad, in the, you know, because that happens from time to time, they were stuck. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something that still is a regret for a lot of these people. And look, as a financial advisor, when you're talking to executives, quite a few executives, you'll try to tell people, hey, get your money diversified. But they're like, yeah, but you don't know what we got coming. Mm -hmm. We got some great stuff. We're going to make a fortune. The greed overcomes the fear That's that right. they should have, that they're taking too much risk. And then you're left with devastation yep. at the end.